For this intervention we're going to need a whole lot of parts, starting with a fuel filter, oil filter, a set of crush washers, some o-rings for the injectors, an oil filter cover gasket, an oil filter removal tool which will need modifying, a set of spark plugs and a performance air filter. Why the heck not? What's up everybody, Jeffrey McAvoy here. It's good of you to be back. Uh, welcome to this huge video about how to service the BMW K1200 RS. I combined all of the episodes into one huge one. So hang on to your butts, this is going to be a big one. Now I do assume that you are familiar with a set of spanners and you know the difference in between a screwdriver and a hammer. And so let's start with cleaning the throttle bodies. As you can tell, these are um, gummed up and very dirty as they would most likely be after years of service. Some of these steps are self-explanatory, some others are not. In any case, I'll be babbling along for 20 minutes, so hang on to your butts. These are the fuel injectors, which are extremely dirty, which I will uh, throw into the ultrasonic cleaner so that they are um, ultrasonically cleaned, dare I say. Now the throttle body needs removing and there's this little breather tube around on the other side of the bike, which is very complicated to access and a bit of a pain in the ass, if you ask me. There we go. Now it's worth mentioning that this tube costs about five bucks and is worth definitely replacing as the uh, as it is completely cracked. There you go. Um, and look at what was in it. Dear God, what the hell? Ah, oh, man, it's not looking good. Now that is not looking good indeed. Before removing the uh, throttle uh, balancing screws, I screwed them in just to assess where they are positioned. Now, as it is, just dump the thing in the ultrasonic cleaner at 80 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes, roughly. And this is how they came out. Nice and steaming hot and perfectly clean. Look at that. Brand spanking new. Now there's that little blue balancing screw which you do not want to touch at all. Don't touch it. That one right there. See, this is the botch job which I did. I sabotaged myself, but it's better than nothing. I didn't think of ordering this part when I should have. So you guys do that. If you intend to take the throttle bodies off or if your bike runs like a sack of rocks, then uh, that might be the cause. So I clear, cleaned it out, cleaned all the balancing tubes, and now it's all squeaky clean. Look at that. Now putting back that little breather pipe is uh, as much a pain in the ass as it is to uh, take it off, in fact. All you need is a bit of patience. Nip those tight and we are done. Now I have this nifty device to test injectors which I'm currently using to flush them out actually. Um, it uh, simulates the pulsations from an ECU either for one second, five seconds, ten seconds or continuously which is really really useful in this case. So I just have to turn the ignition on to get the fuel pump running and get some pressure in the fuel rail and then activate the injectors one by one. And this is a crap which came out of one of the injectors. I did that four times and it was pretty much the same thing everywhere. Glad that's done. Look at that. Looks brand spanking new. I can already hear the rev limiter. Now, while we're at it, changing the air filter to a performance fitment is an arguable decision. Uh, some of them, some of you people uh, agree and others don't. I don't care because I did it. Now this little uh, paper tab is absolutely useful to remove the original uh, air filter and I'm very glad that it is original which shows me that the bike has been properly maintained so far. So I'll to the K&N air filter box, a set of instructions which I will be reading, the air filter itself of course, a couple of stickers, always like to have these, you know, show your appreciation for the make and uh, this little sticker here which you leave on the air box so that uh, so that you don't throw, throw the filter away. And some air filter sealing grease, which is uh, a new thing uh, to me. Uh, basically, it's just some grease, uh, which you have to uh, lay a bead down on the contour of the whole air filter before slapping it back into the air box and uh, screwing the cover back on. It's as simple as that, piece of cake. 
lubing up these holes with some good old red rubber grease from Castrol. I do strongly suggest you get some of that stuff. Uh, because it is specifically formulated for rubber wear, so it doesn't um, dry it out or liquefy rubber. It's uh, very, very useful in many different applications. Now, some more screwing. I did a lot of screwing in this project. Now, moving on to adjusting the valves, or at least uh, checking the uh, valve lash. Very important uh, part of setting up an engine. Now the spark plug caps were a pain in the ass to remove. They haven't moved in quite a while. Um, so once the cover is removed, most definitely clean the mating surface of the uh, gasket. Very, very important for later on. So here's how to proceed to measuring the uh, valve clearances. You have the inlet, which is uh, 15 hundredths, uh, in between 15 and 20 hundredths of a millimeter. And in, on the exhaust is in between uh, 25 and 30 hundredths of a millimeter. Now you do need a set of feeler gauges. And I usually take up a sheet of paper, write down the number of cylinders and divide the number of valves as well. So I can write down each clearances as I measure them. Very useful. Shift into top gear, so to speak, and this enables you to rotate the engine by rotating the rear wheel. So in sixth gear, just pushing the wheel forward with the spark plugs out, obviously, and you can easily rotate the engine until you attain the uh, position in which you can measure the uh, clearance in between the camshaft and the tappet. So grab your feeler gauges and what you want to do is to position the heel of the cam towards the uh, valve tappet or bucket as they call them on the K1200RS. Now proceed to writing down the, uh, the measure that you have um, measured. That's a lot of measuring in, in the same phrase. <clears throat> Write it down and rotate the engine and do the same thing for every other valve. Um, now the uh, firing order is one, uh, 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 three, four, two. And I'm quite happy with the results actually. There's only one uh, tolerance who is slightly out and some of them are loose, some of them are tight, but generally speaking, it, uh, you know, I'll live with it this way. Um, to adjust the valves, you do have to remove the camshafts, which is not something that I deem necessary to do at this stage. Now it is something that I will do, and while I'm doing that, I will definitely change the timing chain and sprockets, which has to be carried out anyway around 80,000 kilometers, and we're nearly there, pretty much. So at least I know where I stand with the valve clearances, and I'm very happy about that. Next, whip up my quick gasket maker from Loctite. This is not a sponsored video. All you need is a uh, thin bead on the half moon areas of the gasket. Now it is uh, important to note that you may reuse this gasket if it is still a good nick. In this case it was. And you just need to apply this tiny little bead, especially in the corners of these half moon areas, because that's where it has a tendency to leak. Now, last check of the mating surface of the gasket and degrease and apply a tiny little dab of that uh, gasket maker here and there and just grab your gasket and gently squeeze it into place. There we go. Easy does it. Perfect. Now check along my left hand there, it's sort of oozing out. So I did uh, put a tiny little bit too much of the stuff. You really, really need to go use that uh, sparingly. So just wipe that out. There we go. Don't want it on the timing chain or anything. You really need to use it sparingly. There we go. Now grab your uh, rocker cover and check that uh, the spring is in place. Is it there? Are you sure? Yes. Okay, then uh, that spring, I, I have no idea why it's there, but it is. The German engineers uh, certainly made that for a good reason. 
Um, fitting back the bolts and tightening them down to nine Newton meters, as it says in the uh, workshop manual. Doesn't sound like much, but it's more than enough. All you need to do uh, with this part is for it not to fall off while you're riding. Show it some love and uh, wipe it down when you're done. There you go, nice and clean. That's a job well done. Nice. Moving on, the spark plugs. Here are the specification of the brand new spark plugs and the uh, required gap, which is at 80 hundredths of a millimeter. Now, gapping the spark plugs is uh, extremely important. It's uh, paramount, in fact, for the proper functioning of uh, the ignition system. I'll explain why probably in another video if there is some interest. Now, just slap them on, put the wires back on, and that's it. Moving on. Hang on to your butts. Did I tell you that there's going to be lots of stuff here going on? So draining the oil, checking that there are no metallic flakes in there, which there aren't. I'm very happy about that and remove the oil filter access cover. It's kind of messy to do this and a bit of a pain in the butt, uh, but it does need to be done. Now, I did modify the oil filter tool and here's the original oil filter. Now, is this the original one which, with which the bike left the factory? I don't know, but the little rubber gasket stayed stuck onto the engine block. So I had to go back up in there and take it off. Do be extra careful about that. Very happy to find out that it's an original BMW part. So this, this bike has definitely been well maintained. Very low mileage example. Now, which oil did I choose? I used 2050 mineral oil. Now, this is also uh, an argu arguably uh, some sort of discussion point uh, where people usually do what they, what they want. I just follow the book. Next up, the uh, fuel filter, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because you need to have the uh, take the tank off, obviously, and empty it before removing the fuel pump assembly. And these two uh, need to be removed as well. Now, I'm pretty sure that it's at this point wh where I damaged the, uh, fuel, fil the um, fuel gauge sender unit, which I suggest you remove as well before tackling this job otherwise you risk damaging it like I did like a bloody fool and I ended up stranded on the side of the road because I thought I still had petrol and I didn't there we go there's a fuel filter uh, the fuel pump sorry with the little strainer and the filter up top that's pretty much self-explanatory it's a piece of cake just remove it and um, put the clips back on and you are done slap the thing back on there be careful not to damage the gasket Put it back on the bike and fill it with some high octane petrol. There you go. Beautiful, crispy slow mo right there. And close the cap. Um, close the cap. Close the cap already. Jesus. There we go. Now, since the uh, fuel system has been drained of all the fuel, um, get some pressure in the system by turning on and off the ignition, which activates the fuel pump. And start the old dog up. Haven't started in ages. Still runs like a sack of rocks. We'll have to take care of synchronizing the butterflies and we'll do that near the end of the video. So stick around. Okay, one of my favorite parts is actually uh, slapping the service sticker on there and stamping it. I love doing that, so much fun. There you go. You have been serviced. And for the owner to know who to call in case he has a problem, which he won't because this is a BMW, slap the sticker on. I'm very proud of these. Only a select few get to have these on their bikes and cars. 
and crack a cold one open and celebrate. That's a nice one. There we go. Thou have been serviced. Ready to hit the road. Almost. While we're at it, here, yeah, wipe that down, of course. While we're at it, we're going to change the uh, coolant, which has been in the bike for definitely ages. So remove the cap, and the only way to drain the coolant is to remove the bottom hose off the uh, water pump. It's kind of a messy thing to do, but um, yeah, just take it easy. Use a suitable container and let it drain out. Give it a bit of clean while you're at it. Don't forget to put it back on once it's empty, of course, and then follow this little tube to the expansion tank. Now to get to that, you need to remove the uh, side, uh, the, like the body part, the fairing or, or whatever you want to call it. The more I get involved with this bike, the more I dismantle stuff. It's starting to piss me off. Word. So there it is, uh, holds in place with one tiny little bolt, very easy to remove. And definitely you have to do this, you have to do this because this is a definition of grey water. Look at that. Oof, my goodness. Jesus. What is that, like cement or something? It certainly looks like it. Now it came out as some sort of uh, like a clayish, clay-like substance, which is definitely not something that you want to have in your engine. Uh, so these are some deposits of uh, God only knows what, and they have nothing to do there in the engine. So that's why you need to flush it out and clean everything. And uh, I took the opportunity to mark the minimum and maximum uh, um, levels on the expansion tank just for for ease of use pretty much you can just look it up at a glance remove yet even more paneling off the bloody bike while we're at it you know why the heck not to reroute the uh the little feed tube towards the expansion tank just uh use common sense if you forgot how it fitted and uh and that's that for the uh, coolant system now top it up fill it up more like with a 50 50 mix of ethylene glycol and uh, distilled water. Once your level is up, squeeze that tube down there and flush all the air bubbles out. There you go, bubbling away and top it up. You'll have to top up the expansion tank as well, fill it to the max and uh, struggle with this little rubber as, uh, as you would with uh, some other type of rubber. It makes me think of something. Anyway, while I'm at it, flush the brakes as well. Look at how dirty that uh, oil uh, is. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. You have to change this every other year at the same time as the coolant. So now it's done. Now top it up with some fresh fluid. And look how it comes out. There we go. Beautiful. Did the clutch as well and the rear brake, obviously. And so all the fluids on this bike have been changed. Now time to uh, adjust the butterflies. It runs like a sack of rocks. Look at that. Smokes like crazy as well. Not supposed to do that, but that eventually uh, died out. It hasn't run in a while. And so it took me roughly 20 minutes uh, to get it right and correct. The bike has to be at operating temperature, and this is the best I could do. Not too shabby, I'd say. So there you go, that's it. Idle is set at uh, 1100 RPM. It runs beautifully well, drives like a dream. I absolutely love this bike, it's fantastic. I hope you enjoy yours. Thank you so much for sticking around for uh, a little under 20 minutes listening to me babble about the K1200 RS, which is an absolutely fantastic bike. I really hope you liked this video. Drop a like if you did. Make sure you check out my Patreon page as well. It does help quite a lot to keep my uh, channel ad free and uh, you know, it helps me create even more videos like these and some other interesting ones which are coming up. Many thanks for that. Many thanks for your support. Thanks for hanging around. Thanks for subscribing. Just thank you for being such awesome people out there. Stay safe, uh, enjoy your bikes uh, and um, I'll be catching you all in the next video. Peace out everybody. Goodbye.